And welcome back. So for lecture 10, we'll cover on non-parametric statistics. So lecture 10 and lecture 11 are non-parametric tests. Okay, so first we have to understand what are non-parametric tests. Okay, so we'll go to the next slide. All right, non-parametric test is essentially used for um, data that is not normally distributed. If you remember from your t-test, from your ANOVA, the data have to be normally distributed and those tests that can be used for norm normally distributed data are called parametric tests. Non-parametric tests are those used for skewed data, basically data that doesn't look normally distributed and we have a lot of them. Non-parametric tests is actually very difficult or tedious to do by hand. Okay? That is why <clears throat> we only cover in this chapter and in this chapter we'll cover two of the four. Okay, so you have your um, Wilconox Man Whitney U test, Cruxy Wallace test, Wilconox Science Ranks test, and Fragment test. In this in this lecture, what we are covering is on ordinal data for non-parametric tests. So we have four of them. We will only cover um, two of them: Wilconox Rank Sums, Wilconox Rank Sums test, and your Wilconox Science ranks test okay we will not cover your crossy wallace test or fragment test essentially this is a table for you to see so if you have two samples with differing individuals parametric version you use your independent t-test your two samples t-test okay but non-parametric version you use your wilconox science uh, ranks test okay? for three samples you use your anova in the first place okay, if it's parametric if non-parametric, we can use your Cruxer Wallace test. Remember your t-test, there's also dependent t-test, which sometimes, most of the time, I call them as PET t-test. Your non-parametric version will be your Wilconox rank, rank science, uh, site ranks test. Okay. For repeated measure t-test, which, which we did not really cover, so we will not cover here, that's called your fragment test. Okay, so in essence, is what I said before. Statistic can, statistical tests can be divided into two different types, parametric tests and non-parametric tests. Now, parametric tests is basically all those that can be used when the data is normally distributed. When the data is not normally distributed, or if we assume that the data is not normally distributed, then we use non-parametric tests. So it means that um, by right, before you do a t-test, you actually have to test for normality, although this is not covered um, in your lecture. Even when you use your ANOVA, by right, you have to do your test for normality. Okay? So these are tests of assumptions that we did not cover. The, how, how does statistics actually use non-parametric tests? Okay, so if you think about it, one way that statistics can use that you can do statistics for non-normally distributed data is not to look at the average, the mean. Instead, you are looking at the median or the ranks. Because you are looking at the median or the ranks, it makes it very tedious. Now, there is a mathematical formula to calculate the average, but there is no mathematical formula to calculate the median there is a procedure a series of steps to get the median first you have to take the data then you have to sort it out then you have to rank it and find what is the middle rank that is how you actually find a median because of this it makes non-parametric tests very tedious which is why we have to use programs like r and all this to do it okay now in real life if you um if, let's say you when in event that you can use ANOVA, but you do not know whether it's normally distributed or not, you can actually just jump into the non-parametric version, okay, which is what we'll be covering today. Now that is also appropriate. That means you don't assume normality. Okay. Now, okay. So what we are doing here is ordinal data. The 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 data is ordinal in nature, and the underlying distribution is we don't assume is to be normally distributed or it's just not normally distributed okay so the first test that we are going to do is your Wilconox ranks 
sums test, sometimes also known as your man Whitney rank sums test, okay, or man Whitney use test, U test. It's a non-parametric version that is similar to your two sample t test. It's analogous to it. Okay. So what you are assume, assuming is the the data is ordinal. Okay. The two samples must be independent. It cannot be dependent. Okay. And it's drawn from random population. Okay. The, the thing that you the assumption from t test that you release is that it is normally distributed. So in short, what does it what does um we cannot rank some stats do? Okay. Now if the data is um the if the date if the samples are similar, okay, the ranks of the data should be similar as well. Okay, so what you do is you combine the values of both data sets and then you rank them, then you separate out into the two samples, okay. So imagine this: you have two samples, you combine the two samples together, okay. But you still retain the identity that each value comes from sample one or sample two. You rank them, you assign a rank to each one, each value, then you push it back into the two samples. And what you are calculating is the average or the sum of the ranks for each samples. Let's say sample A and sample B. Sample A and sample B, let's say both of them have 10 uh, data points. You put them together, you have 20 data points. Okay, But you know that, let's say, and then you rank them. However, you know that the fifth, the fifth value is from sample 1 or sample 2. Okay, After you rank them, you assign the ranks, then you split back into its original sample. So you go back to sample 1 and sample 2. The total number of ranks for sample 1 and the total number of ranks for sample 2. That's why it's called a rank sum stats. If the data is... The now hypothesis states that if the, the, if the distribution are the same, then the total number of ranks, the sum of the ranks for sample 1, should be similar to the sum of the ranks for sample 2. Now, if the sum are approximately equal, okay, then the null hypothesis will be true. But if there's a large difference in the ranks, then the original distribution may be different. Then the null hypothesis will be rejected. So in principle, that's what happened. The main thing that we want to show you is the principles of doing it. I have to tell you, it's very tedious. Okay, so let's um, use an example. So a research was conducted to see if there's a difference between drug A and drug B in promoting urine for edema patients. So you have drug A and drug B. Okay. So you have a patient number, patient number, and then you know that patient 103 uses drug A and so on and so forth. So this is the urine. Okay. Your first step is to combine them, but you keep the idea that patient 109 is from drug A. Okay, and so on and so forth. So Let's see how we can do that. You combine both drug A and drug B together, then you rank them. You have to, of course, tie do the splitting for the rank ties. So 1000 and 1000, this is the lowest. So it's rank 1 and rank 2 divided by 2. So it runs from 1.5. The next one is one, 1200, oh no, 1180. So it's rank 3, rank 4, and so on and so forth. Okay. So you rank them properly. And then you split back into drug A and drug B. After that, you sum up the ranks. So the total ranks for the sum of the ranks for drug A is 51. You add up these numbers. Okay, 1.5 plus 3 plus 11.5 plus 14 plus 10 plus 5.5 plus um, 4 plus 1.5. You get it to 51. You do that for B. Okay. So what we are trying to see is what is 51 close enough to 58 to reject or accept the null hypothesis? If these two numbers, the, the sum of ranks for A and the sum of ranks for B is very close, let's say um, maybe we have 60 and 62, then unlikely null hypothesis will be rejected. So this, we have to go back to a table based on what is the number of samples. 
So the concept is this. If the two ranks are similar, others, we have two ranks, if the two ranks are similar, then we can say that we accept the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So there are two ranks. You either have to do a two-tail test, right-tail test, or left-tail test. Now, for two-tail test, you have two critical values now. Okay. You reject H, you reject null hypothesis if the T statistic or the difference in rank is, is below, the statistics is actually below the critical value or above the critical value. For right tail test, you, you accept, you reject. If it is above the critical value, for low left tail test, it is below the critical value. Okay. So remember, we have 51 and 85 in the first place. So based on this example, we want to see is if drug A and drug B have a difference in promoting urine. So it's a urine formation. So it's a two-tail test. Both have sample size of 8. So we have to go to a table and look for sample size of 8 in group A and group B, or sample A and sample B. Okay. And then let's say we use these two, we have two t test statistics now. Okay. And then based on the values, because it is alpha divided by 2, we use the lower tail is 0 0.025, the upper tail is 0 0.025 as well. So our lower value is 49, our upper value is 87. In this case, you realize that for two tail tests, 51 and 40, 51 and 85 is in between 49 and 87. Therefore, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. It has to be lower than 49 and higher than 85. Okay, then we can reject null hypothesis. Therefore, the test statistic is actually not in the critical region. The critical region is below this and then above this. Okay. So the decision is fail to reject null hypothesis. Therefore, we accept null hypothesis, meaning to say that there is no difference um, in drug A and drug B for um, urine diff, uh, the amount of urine formation in edema patients. Now, it may sound quite easy. The difficult part with non-parametric statistics is that every single test has its own way of sorting. That is why it is not easy to remember. Okay, Please keep these notes so that you can revise it whenever you need to know the principles. Otherwise, most of the time, we use R to do it. Okay. So imagine 8 by 8, you can actually do it quite well. How about if I give you 20 by 20? You're going to sort for half a day or at least an hour. So it makes it very tedious. Okay, the good thing is because it's going to be very tedious, now if the sample size is large enough, that means both sample A and sample B is more than 10, then technically we can approximate it using your normal distribution. Okay, it falls back to a Z test. It falls back to a z-test. The mean is calculated by the number of sample A times the number of sample A and B plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, that's if sample A is less than sample B. Okay. Or the other way around if sample B is more than sample A. The standard deviation is also calculated this way. Now the standard deviation then doesn't no, doesn't care about is sample A larger than sample B or sample B larger than sample A. And then you have your t-statistic, correct? Your t-statistic, your mean value which is calculated by this equation here, and then your standard deviation, you get a z-statistic. Now because you have two t-values, the t-upper and t-lower, you can cons you can actually calculate your two z-tests and see whether does it fall within your critical region or not. This is the reason why Zach test is actually taught to you, um, even though we keep saying that in real life we seldom use Zach test. It's because when non-parametric test becomes tedious or when it starts to sample size becomes large, we can always fall back to your Zach test.
Okay, the next test that we are covering is your Wilconox Science Site Ranks Test, which is the uh, non-parametric equivalent of your PET T test, also known as your Dependent Samples T test. Usually, we cover it based on before and after. So, for example, we want to see if a, a, a drug, a painkiller drug, let's say um, drug C, have any effect on, let's say, a group of patients. So, you can actually ask the patient to rate the pain scale before the treatment and then after the treatment. You can even do this for, let's say, before and after, a, let's say, a fitness program. Does a fitness increase? A person lose a weight? Whether uh, a seminar increase the student's um, motivation level? Okay, so things that you can use for your PET T test, you can use it here. Okay, so back to our patient data. So we have a set of patients. We have two, four, six, eight, ten patients. Two, four, six, eight, yeah, ten patients. So they, before and after taking the drug, maybe immediately before, they do a scale okay, of maybe one to ten. So you have four and so on. After maybe one hour after taking a the drug, they rank again, whether as what, you know, based on themselves, what is the rank, the the level of pain that they have. So this is the data that we have. And if you remember, if we do a PET-T test, essentially you take 4 minus 4, 6 minus 3 and so on. And you find that is the average of the difference equals to 0. So how does your side rank test actually do it? Okay, since Wilconox rank, sum, rank science test is similar, it's a non-parametric version of your PET-T test or depend dependent samples t-test, the now hypothesis or the cell hypothesis is the same. Okay? So here we say that drug C has no effect on the pain scale. The uh, outer hypothesis is drug C has an effect on the pain scale. So it's a two-tail test. Okay? The first step is to find the difference in the pain scale. Similar, in fact identical to how you do your t, um, PET t-test. We take after minus before or before minus after is up to you. So you take minus, minus off, and then we get this value, the difference. In your two, in your PET T test, what you'll find is, is the average of this difference equals to zero. Okay, that is, you are not going to do that for your PET, for your uh, Wilconox Science Ranks test. You will see how we're going to do that. But up to this stage, the difference is the same as your PET T test. Okay, the only difference comes with the next part, because then you have to rank. In your PET-T test, you do the average, the mean. Okay, so then the third step is to rank the magnitude, just the numerical number. You ignore whether it's a positive sign or negative sign. If it's a negative sign, you just treat it as though it's positive. Okay? And then you rank them. If there's no difference, let's say for example this zero, they are irrelevant, you can't ignore them. So how do you do that? If we say that this is 3, 3, 4, 4, 2, 3, 2, 5, by ignoring the signs, right? Okay. So 2 will be the, the first one. But there are two twos, so it's rank number 1 and rank number 2. Rank 1 plus rank 2 gives you 3. 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. Okay, so we settled up to 3 already. Okay. Then the next one is 3. So there are three trees. Rank 3, rank 4, rank 5. Rank 3 plus 4 plus 5 give you 12. 12 you divide by 3 is 4. Okay. Then after that, uh, we have up to rank 5. So rank 6, rank 7. So number 4 is rank 6, rank 7. 6 plus 7 is 13. 13 divided by 2 is 6.5. Okay. And finally, 5 is actually rank number 8. Okay. So you, you do that first. Now you realize that it's, it's different um, compared to your um, your rank sum stats already. After that, step four, then based on the ranks, you put back the signs. Okay, you you already done the rank part. How about the sign part? Then you put back the signs. If this is a if the original difference is negative, then the sign will have a negative symbol. Okay, so this is from four. Because it's minus 3, minus 3, so from 4, 4 and 4 to minus 4. This is 4, and then the rank is 6.5, so it becomes minus 6.5. But this is positive 4, the rank is 6.5, so remain as it is, and so on. 
okay so this is how you do the rank the science rank okay. step five you choose a statistic based on the mean difference is it more than or less than or if the mean difference is more than or the mean difference is less than so this is your two-tailed test mean difference is not equal to zero it's a two-tailed test mean difference is more than zero and mean difference is less than zero is your one tail test but it depends you have a two test statistic now the two test statistic is your w plus and w minus w plus is the sum of all the positive ranks while w minus is the absolute sum of the negative ranks so you you just add up the negative ranks and you do the absolute so you have two actually statistic but if it's a if a two tail test then you choose a smaller between these two numbers Okay, so you have two steps to calculate now. So based on our test statistic just now, our post, sum of positive rank is 9.5. But the absolute sum of negative ranks is 26.5. Because it's a two-tail test, okay, we choose the lower of these two numbers, which we then take the 9.5. Okay, so this is called a a statistic known as W. W becomes 9.5 and then we use this as a statistic to test against your table, your critical value. Okay, then we look then we look at the critical value based on the number of differences. So just now we have 10 patient samples so we look at 10. If it's a one tail test then it's 0 0.5, 0 0.25. If a two tail test is 0 0.1 and 0 0.25. So uh, the table is actually quite rudimentary. So let's say we have uh, 10 differences. And ours is two-tail test, so we, our alpha is 0 0.05, our critical value is 8. Okay, this is how you read the table, our critical value is 8. Okay. When, what does it mean by when there's dash? Okay, basically, the sample is too small to calculate. Okay. So our critical value is 8 for now. Okay, then test step number 6, we compare your test statistic, which just now we calculate as 8. Uh, test statistic is your 9.5. Um, with the critical value. So for Wilconox science rank test, we will reject the null hypothesis if the test is the test statistic is smaller than the critical value. So this is a rule. Our critical differences, I think there's a typo error in your uh, slides. I've changed it here already. So the number of differences is 10. We have 10 patients. So our critical value is 8 as we covered in the last slide. Our, our test statistic is 9.5. So 9.5 is actually more than 8. We only reject when the test statistic is less than 8. So in this case, we do not reject the null hypothesis or we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, we accept the null hypothesis. And in conclusion, step number 7, there is no significant effect in the pain scale before and after taking drug C, which also means that there is no drug C has actually no effect on the pain scale. Okay, so this is how we perform your Wilconox science ranks test. And as you realize that it is a different set of procedure, that is what makes it difficult. It is a step of, it's a procedure, uh, a step rather than like your PET T test and your two sample C test, it has a formula for that. Okay, with that, we have actually come to the end of the lecture because we remove two tests for you, we remove your um, your Kruxker Wallace test and your fragment test. So there's only two tests to study for this topic. So see you again pretty soon. Bye bye.